This is a cross section that shows the hydraulic head contours as yellow dashed lines in an unconfined aquifer. We can use these contours to infer the flow direction. One thing we have to assume though before we do this is that the aquifer is isotropic and homogeneous. Often aquifers are layered and so they would be viewed as anisotropic uh, in cross-section, but for our purposes here we're just going to assume that the uh, this unconfined aquifer is isotropic. And if we do that then we can infer that the flow direction is perpendicular to the cross sec or the contour and uh, goes from high head to low head. So it would have that direction where it's perpendicular to the dashed yellow line. Over here it would have a direction more like that where it's perpendicular and we can also infer that recharge that enters the water table right here um, would take a path somewhat like this where I'm drawing these this path line perpendicular to the contours like so and it's gonna go and ultimately discharge to the stream. We could do that again and recharge that enters right here is going to take a path like that that's perpendicular to these head contours and the flow is along that path um, from uplands discharging to the stream. So that's the kind of flow path that we would expect and uh, we can infer that from these head contours. Now in a different scenario um, we have a, a losing stream. In the previous example that was a gaining stream. Here's a losing stream and the stream is at higher head. It's at a head of five and it's higher than the heads out here in the aquifer and so in this case we would infer that the flow direction looks somewhat like this. So there would be a flow path that would go and always cross these head contours uh, perpendicular to the, the, the contours. Okay, so there's a, uh, the flow leaving a losing stream. We can also do this for the head contours associated with a well. The well isn't shown, but we might infer, we would expect the screen would be there. And so we can infer that the flow in this unconfined aquifer would look something like this and perpendicular to these contours so in that direction or along that path and another one another path would go somewhat like this and come into the well screen like that and over here on the right side we would have some water that would be going along a path like that. Um, and another flow path might be like this. But if we move over further to the right, then water that, that comes in here would have a flow path that would be something like this. The, this, this well here is not being pumped, that one right there. So um, it's just a piezometer. And so we can see from this that we've got a divide right here um, where uh, water on this side of the divide goes to the well and water on this side goes to the stream. Okay, so we can learn quite a lot from these cross sections. Let's see how we go about constructing these cross sections. And uh, to do this, we're going to look at pairs of piezometers first and just try to infer how to um, determine the vertical flow direction. And these pairs of piezometers we'll assume are, um, are very close to one another and so they're really only indicating the vertical uh, gradient. So we can get the direction of the flow from the, um, the sign of the gradient and we can get the magnitude of the gradient from this drawing. So here's the screen on the piezometer and the water level in this piezometer is at this level. So what we can infer is that uh, the head gradient 
is the change in H over the change in L. The change in H would be that distance. The delta L would be that distance there. And just by inspection, it looks like uh, delta H is about two times delta L. So the head gradient is approximately equal to uh, 1 over 2. And the head at this location, at the lower screen, is greater than the head at the upper screen. So we have the flow direction is upward. In this example, delta H is that uh, a distance, and delta L is that distance. So the head gradient, magnitude of the head gradient, in this case, is about 1 over 4. Because the separation, a vertical separation of the screens, is about 4 times greater than the head difference. And in this case, the higher head is at that screen, because that's the, the head at that screen. And at the lower screen, we've got a lower head. So in this case, the flow is downward, like that. And here, we've got the head at this screen is above the ground surface. So if this well was uncapped, say we, say we have a valve here on this well, and if we open that valve, then we would have water flowing out just spontaneously as a result of the head down at this screen. Okay, so we can just though use this as a head difference between uh, these two points and this, that's delta H there, and this is, as with the other examples, this is delta, oops, this is delta L, so um, these are about the same, so in this case delta H by delta L is approximately equal to 1. So we've got a head gradient of unity and uh, the lower screen right here is at the higher head so we've got upward flow in this case. Alright, so this is uh, a way we can get the vertical head gradient and estimate the vertical component of flow. Now we want to take this one step further and get these head contours. So what I'm showing here is a sketch that's similar to the, what we saw previously um, where here's the screen and this vertical line right here is a piezometer and the head in this piezometer is shown right here. Um, and so what we can do then is determine what the head at each one of these screens is by determining the elevation of the water level that occurs in that piezometer. So you will do it like this. We'll, let, let's work on this screen at first. Okay. So this is the water level in the piezometer and if we go across to the uh, elevation of this measured above the datum, so this is a datum and the, the position of the datum is arbitrary. So we just selected to have it start at this point and we can do that so long as we always use the same datum and so we go across and we see that the water level in this well is at an elevation of 14 and that head applies here to the screen. Okay, so the head in the piezometer applies to the location of the screen uh, in, the, in the piezometer. All right, so we can continue on and do this again. And so if we are interested in this piezometer, we go across and the head of the water level at that piezometer is 24. So the head at that screen is 24. And we can continue with this and determine the hydraulic head at each one of the screens. Another thing that we can do is recognize that this surface here, this is the water table. And at the water table, by definition, 
the pressure head is equal to zero. So the total head is equal to the elevation plus the pressure head. So at the water table, the pressure head is equal to zero, so that's zero. So the total head at the water table is equal to the elevation. So all along the water table here, we can determine the hydraulic head as equal to the elevation. So right there is 36, so we go across with a horizontal line, and we get the hydraulic head at the water table there as 36. All right, so now we're going to go and do this example and come up with hydraulic head contours um, on in cross-section. And so the procedure will be to go through the steps that we just saw and use them to identify the hydraulic head at each one of the screens. And then once we've done that, we can simply draw in the contours as we might contour other types of, uh, uh, of quantities. So here's how it goes. So the elevation of the water here is 32, and that applies to this location. The elevation here is 24, and that applies to the well screen here. The elevation at this location, or the elevation at that location, is equal to like 19. And I filled in these other ones, um, these other, the heads at these screens using a similar approach. And I'll get a couple more points. Let's get the head right there. That's going to be 24 because that's at the water table and that's the elevation. And let's see, right there, that would be 16. And there's right there's 10 okay so now we're ready to draw in the contours so we've got uh, uh, the, the low point here is 2 and the high point here is 40 so I'm going to draw in contours with a contour spacing of 10 uh, and I'm going to do that and we might want to divide it up after have to do that, but I'll, I'll do 10, 20, and 30 uh, as a start. So let's start at the, at the low end, and let's see here is 10, and here's 10 at that screen. So we've got a contour that, head contour that goes through those points like that. 20 is going to be, here's 16, here's 24, so 20 is going to be right here at the water table and it's going to come through there's 19 so it's going to be right there here's another 19 so it's going to be right here so it looks like it looks like the 20 contour is like there so there's 20 there's 10 and 30 is going to be right there at the water table, right? Because there's the 30 elevation. So it's going to start there. And there's 24 and there's 32. So it's going to come through right there. So 30 is going to look like that. And so here's here's the, the divide. This is the high point of the water table. So I can refine this a little bit because I can say that this is going to, the, the water table is going to, or the, we're going to have a flow divide so that the head contours are going to look like this. Okay, and then 40 would be right here. Now I think I want a little more detail than that, so 
let's go and do uh, every five. So five at the water table will be right starting right there and it's going to between be come between four and six so it's going to go right there. I'm going to start here and I'll do dashed lines like this and it'll wrap around like that. So there's five and let me label this one here 30 just so I can keep track of things. So there's 5, 10, and then 15 is going to start right here. And there's, there's 14. So it's going to be above 14. Looks like something like that. There's 15. 25 would be, oh, there's 24, so it'll be above that. Okay. So... And it looks like I, I, I did not continue with the, uh, the dashed lines. Okay, so there are the head contours that I, I get from um, these, uh, I don't know, a dozen or so uh, piezometers. And I can go and infer the flow directions like I did in one of the previous examples. And it would be something like this. And the flow would go off of the cross section in this case and here's another flow path and this one might curve around and cross has to cross this and be perpendicular to it so like that and then maybe another flow path like this going to discharge it to that stream and this is this is the groundwater divide so there's no flow along that path and all of the recharge on this side curves over and would ultimately uh, come and discharge to that stream okay so that's a pre procedure for making cross sections uh, from piezometer data and using it to, to determine a contour map of hydraulic head and cross-section. Here are some of the guidelines that you should use when doing this. So remember that the elevation of the water level in the piezometer it gives the magnitude of the head at the screen in the piezometer. So determine the elevation of the water level and then write the value at the screen. That's probably the most important thing to remember. The, the thing where some people get confused is that they, you have to remember that the water level only gives you the magnitude of the head. It doesn't have anything to do with location. Uh, the location applies to the screen. The elevation of the water table is equal to the head um, at that point because, well, at the water, the elevation of the water table is equal to the head at that point because the pressure head is zero at the water table. Uh, that's by definition. Also remember that the head in surface water is continuous with head along the water table. At least that's what we're assuming when we do this. Um, the lowest head in a system where the stream is gaining should occur at the stream and all flow will be going towards that stream. One exception would be if there was a well in the system um, then you could have head lower than the well. Um, so that's a, this example. And if the aquifer is um, overlain by a losing stream, then the heads in the aquifer would be less than the heads in the stream.